and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some War Mother Lux. That's right, the new version of War Mother deck. We've been having some success with War Mother decks recently. We played the War Mother Glinthorn the other day, and that was pretty sweet. Now we're heading over to Demacia, and we're actually going a lot more unit heavy, which um, you know isn't always what you want to do with War Mother's decks because you want your your War Mother's call to get. Uh, you know really expensive things out all the time but it's also okay to, to just get you know just have a whole bunch of units so you can um stabilize easier and stay alive easier to get to your war mother's call let's kind of talk about our deck so we have omen hawk and ice Veil archer to as early plays if we want a lot of the times ice Veil archer is just going to be like a later play that we'll be able to use um that's a really good blocker and just kind of a good utility card. Tavern Keeper, of course, keeping us alive against aggro, but mostly what you always want is Catalyst of Aeons to be able to play this on turn three. Um, the great part about Omen Hawk is we can play Omen Hawk on turn one and still have five mana on turn three to play Catalyst of Aeons, right? Like we just don't do anything on turn two, turn three Catalyst. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Because if we go turn three Catalyst, then we have five mana on turn four, so we can go straight into Avros and Hearthguard. Or Radiant Guardian, maybe we have that Omen Hawk die, we get Radiant Guardian, and so on. We can just keep ramping. We also got um, Avalanche against all sorts of aggro decks running around these days. Braum is a really good way to uh, slow the game down, because that's what we're trying to do. And let's get into our top end. We, of course, got Lux. That's the name of our deck, and, and uh, Lux will um, be able to, you know, we can... Uh, spend that six mana for spells off of Remembrance or Harsh Winds or War Mother's Call. All of those will help Lux level up. And then our top end, we got two Tiana Crown Guards. This is a great card to get off of War Mother's Call because it is just a summon trigger. So you, at the beginning of the turn, you can summon Tiana Crown Guard. And if you if you don't have the attack token, you can get that attack token right away with the Rally. And a couple Bright Steel Formations. These things are huge and wonderful things to get from War Mother's Call definitely a very hard card to beat uh so yeah pretty interesting deck war mother lux let's give it a shot all right we're gonna just go play it over in ranks we're gonna go play five games over there and let's see how it does man we we're 9-1 on the day that that loss was super close that was a pretty crazy loss that we had too with the garen draven deck Did not think we were losing that. <laughs> but. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan everything. I think I just want to find Catalyst of Aeons. Don't really... Like, maybe this is an Avalanche matchup. Honestly, I, I could see keeping Avalanche. Because usually they do play a bunch of, like, small things. You know, like your Jagged Butcher and your uh, Black Market Merchant. And then they have, like, the three drop that makes two bodies. Um, and you know your twisted fate. They have a lot of like little things that Avalanche could kill. So I could see keeping Avalanche. So do we go Remembrance on three or Catalyst on three? You fight or you swim. If I play Remembrance, next turn we will have six mana. Or sorry, if I play Catalyst, next turn we will have six mana, so we'll be able to Remembrance. If I play Remembrance, next turn we have four mana, so we don't get to Catalyst. So I think that that settles it. That we'll go Catalyst this turn, Remembrance next turn. Okay, you usually keep Lux. You don't Mulligan Lux. How do you deal with people holding the gate all game if they know what they're playing against? Yeah, deny. Um, like in what? In like this kind of deck? Are you, are you talking about just like in general or are you talking about playing War Mother's Call? Okay, just War Mother's Call. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to get it out of their hand. You have to just keep playing other things and, and get it out of their hands. Or if you can't, then 
you know, then you'll have to just play into it, I suppose. You know, you just have to play into the design. But hopefully you have enough other things that you can that you can interact with them enough and have them tap down on their mana, but if not, then you know, you don't really have any other choice. You can you can try to be as patient as you can, you know, maybe you throw out an early ruination or something like that in like the, in the traditional War Mother's deck. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't really have options. If they deny your War Mother's call, they, they deny it, and that's just how life is. We're gonna have seven mana. If I cast Remembrance, they could kill Lux in response. I can obviously I can level up with Harsh Winds, or they can't kill Lux in response. To the field. I think we'll do that. Let's attack Harsh Winds, the blockers. To get me out. Yeah, War Mother's Call will only generate one laser. It's just one spell spending 12 mana. It's whenever you cast 6 plus mana of spells you create. So 12 is included in 6 plus. I can do harsh winds also. Pretty nice card to, to nab with Black Market Merchant when you're playing an Ezreal deck. My one last harsh winds. But next turn they're gonna have the attack token, but we do have Tiana Crown Guard that could give that attack token back over to us. Well, also give us one as well. Yeah, but do you get a laser when you harsh winds? Oh man. Just drop crown guard, then drop bright seal formation. Just oh, they stole oh they stole a few cards from us, right? They played a pilfer goods also. Uh, that card's good. All right, maybe I'll just remembrance and get another laser. I don't know. I kind of want to kind of want a hearth guard. We'll get another laser. Isn't Tiana Crown Guard just amazing after Bright Seal Formation? Also. Yeah, usually you're pretty scared of them stealing War Mother's Call. I'm not sure if I'm that scared of them stealing War Mother's Call. Like this deck, but... So that was the other card they took. Conley Tavern Keeper. A chill in the air. I could keep 
could just keep my spell mana, so then I'd be able to play a War Mother's Call if we would draw it. <laughs> Our deck is pretty tough. Ah, shouldn't have played the 3 1. Some barriers. Formation. So this is play or attack. So I can attack again and give all those barriers again. They really shouldn't be using the Mega Rain right then. I'm, I'm glad that they hit just three of our things and not, uh, you know, not the Nexus as far as. Um, Plunder is concerned. I'm so good, I surprised myself. Don't blink, or you miss me. <laughs> They're still barriered. This is our homeland. Yeah, I could definitely be greedy, me attacking for Lux, with Lux. Maybe I'm just supposed to hold Lux back because I was going to be harsh winsing the Ezreal the next turn anyway. So maybe I'd need to be holding Lux back. Um, maybe I don't do that. Maybe I play Tiana. Guess we'll see. Yeah, good records today. It's gonna be difficult for them to win. It's not bragging if you can back it up. Hmm. The problem is, is if I if I don't cast Harsh Winds, then my Great Horn Companion dies. Gotcha. It's not that big of a problem. We strike now. Because then, if they if they kill my Great Horn Companion right now, <clears throat> then they gotta deal with all these attacking. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's possible they have enough damage to kill me if it goes face. I'm always up for a round or two. Oh, that's Something a perfect card. I think that the red card was the right thing for them to do. A game. Go on then. Watch the ball, folks. Where are 
you going? Easy. Buy me a flavoring loop! Yeah, so we'll be able to, we'll go straight to attacks next turn, and then afterwards Tiana and attack again. So, you know, it's basically, does Ezreal kill us, right? Like, do they have enough? Um, if Mystic Shot goes upstairs, that puts us down to eight. And, you know, then they just need four spells or, you know, some combination of things like that. They may be going, like I was gonna say, they may be going Twisted Fate, pick a card. How they kept the Twisted Fate alive. Try to find a whole bunch more stuff. So basically, hope they just don't have enough spells to. Kindly Tavern Keeper would have probably been a good draw. Probably would have been a good one to draw. Okay, cool. Not have enough spells. We have prevailed. GG's. So it was I think I think my mistake I shouldn't have attacked with the Lux. That's why that game was closer than it should have been. I should not have attacked with the Lux. That was too that was too greedy of me. I should have just held the Lux back and um then I would have, you know, had harsh winds on the untap, kill the Ezreal, and we just really can't lose from there. So, that was, I made that closer than it should have been. Uh, I don't, I don't really regret playing the two-man archer, I, because, honestly, playing Bright Steel Formation was probably better than playing War Mother's Call. I don't really regret that. But the attack of the bugs didn't need to happen. Okay, we're facing Heimerlux. So you said you usually keep Lux? I'm, I'm not going to keep Lux. Yay. I want Catalyst of Aeons. Alright, so we do get turn one Hawk, where we can still play Catalyst on three. There we go, that's good. I want to try to ramp into War Mother's Call. I do like Avalanche against Heimerdinger. Good thing that Omen Hawk made this Bright Steel formation to 10 10. That's important. Why'd I pass? No. Oh, they just passed back. Oh, I want. They were, gonna, they were supposed to attack. Oh, uh, they didn't attack. Mm, that was me being greedy. I, I don't need that three life. Denounce magic. A three life's not important enough. Oh man, what a great hand. That's perfect. Turn four, double four, three challenger. Uh opponent play great. Opponent play great. Magic must be stopped. Wow. Well, I definitely don't want to play Ice Veil Archer because I wanted to play the Catalyst Veons previously. All right, seven, ten. Man, these things are all three health too.
will be scoured from this land. Have you met my shield? If I don't, the, so yeah, Braum gives us another another blocker. If we don't play Braum, that's unfortunate. If we don't play Braum, we'd be able to have War Mother's Call the next turn, but it's just it's too risky, you know. Like obviously with all that stuff. I see all. You have no alibi. Uh, yeah, I've played a lot of different Shen mid-range Demacia decks. Um, astonishing. What I'd recommend, yeah, I've, I've been playing a ton of Shen recently. What I'd recommend is just heading over to the YouTube channel um, just an and just go to the playlist brighter. section and just go to, you know, either Ionia or Demacia, whichever one you want. Uh, we played like Shen, like uh, Shen with River Shaper and Fiora Zed Shen the other day. We we did great with that deck. We played. There was a Shen Lux. Um, yeah, there's there's a bunch. Uh, that was I don't know. That was the only hat I've seen. It's okay, Kordak. So yeah, I, I needed you know turn three. I needed to cast that. Um, their hand was amazing though. Like that was that was absolutely perfect. I've played a lot of those kind of Lux decks. I've just played a lot of Lux decks before. Their hand was perfect. I could see keeping Braum. We're playing against Burn. This is gonna be a tough matchup. I'm gonna mulligan Braum. We want Avalanche, we want Kindly Tavern Keeper, we want Catalyst of Aeons. Omen Hawk is good. Did I mark a win? Oh, sorry. Just got too used to doing that. Does that, does that make sense? My favorite, um, I don't know, tough to say. Maybe, maybe the Zed one. We did go 10 and 0 the other day playing Zed at Shen. I, I'll, yeah, I'll never complain about people adding me, you know, on there, like, doing the ad hoc content live. I'll never complain about that. It's, that's people interested in the channel and asking questions and everything. That's nothing to complain about. That's a yeah, good hand here, too. It's flattering. I mean, that's that's my job that's what I, that's what I do is talk to chat answer answer questions and stuff I don't know why I would complain about doing my job uh, yeah good hand pretty good looking hand over there maybe we can have I mean they're gonna like challenge with flame chompers so this doesn't even take damage so I don't don't know how I'm going to turn on these Radiant Guardians. Yeah, it turned out, yeah, it turned out the, Omen, the Omen Hawk turned out to hurt us. Yeah, it's not always going to be the case, but it did turn out to hurt us. Not be able to play the Remembrance. Couple of great hands for our opponents these last two games.
did not find our three most important cards. You know, mulliganed everything looking for Avalanche, Kindly Tavern Keeper, and Catalyst of Aeons. And we did not have any of those three. So yeah, we'll have harsh winds here. You know, we'll get an extra blocker. Yeah, there's I don't know, there's there's a lot of variance in the mic, and I don't I don't know why. I don't know what I'm supposed to do differently with the mic. You know, I wish I wish I knew if it was some sometimes because like if the mic's tilted a certain way, then that's why it sounds kind of scratchy. I don't I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't know. All right, well, two great hands for our opponents. The this kind of deck that we're playing it has a really powerful top end, but it's it is a slow deck, and so it is really hard to beat the opponent's best hands. Like both of those were in their top five, maybe ten percent of hands, like possible draws. Like they were both incredible. We got Catalyst of Aeons this time. Man, we are really not doing a good job of finding. Uh, okay, yeah, we can we can Omen Hawk. You know, against the aggro deck, I just want Avalanche. But we got Catalyst. We got double Catalyst. We got Radiant Guardian. Hopefully. Um, so I need, let's see, I need Omen Hawk to die turn four. That's not super easy having Omen Hawk die turn four. That means I don't get to block this turn. And next turn. Time for the main event. It's not super easy. I guess we could slow it down a little bit and just go with this Ice Veil Archer. A true this is probably a better play. Slow it down. Dang, y'all, yeah, I just added another win. Yeah, it was just, just today, it was just all, you know, before this, it was just all wins. Thanks for letting me know. If I play Catalyst, next turn we're looking at 8 mana. I can block with Omen Hawk next turn and play Radiant Guardian. Um, I can play Braum and still do the whole block next turn block next turn and play Radiant Guardian. Yeah, I guess we just don't really need to play Catalyst. Like, it's just kind of better to, to keep affecting the board, get a Braum and play. They can make another 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, Spooky Sejuani is going to be a mid-range deck. Kind of like Frostbite mid-range, kind of, I guess, but a lot more Shadow Isles. It's Callista Sejuani. I basically built the deck because I wanted to have Callista put bring back Hearthguard, Avros and Hearthguard. The sun rock got me good. And so that's kind of what the deck's about is 
Um, Chronicler of Ruin, Avros and Hearthguard, Callista, Sejuani, that kind of stuff. I'm not expecting it to be the best, but it's going to be pretty fun. We're going to do some cool stuff with it. I stand for Noxus. I got to work with this Joker. I know, right? Many tribes under one banner. Why? Yeah, you would never. You should never. I don't understand. You didn't cut. Yeah, you. Catalyst is the one of the best cards in the deck. You would never cut Catalyst. I'm not. I'm not saying that Catalyst should be cut. Yeah, I don't think. Definitely do not think you should cut Catalyst. I was hoping they would block. I didn't want to make it too obvious of like attack in with Omen Hawk. Didn't want to make it too too obvious. We got this. So where's Braum at? Braum's at 3 out of 10. Still have the perfect mana to play Radiant Guardian. Okay, that's going to be a lot of damage. Not too bad, I guess. Six six radiant guardian should make us feel a lot better. Justice will be served. Especially how I get to attack with it, and then play Tiana Crown Guardian and attack with it again. Should level up Braum. Take four. I don't know why I'm attacking with the Hearth Guard. I forgot that that thing's a seven six. Time for the money makers. Wow. They're just gonna let damage happen. Huh. What do we do? Another Radiant Guardian? Virtue guides me. Hmm. 
yeah, I'm, I'm surprised this 8-6 didn't block my 5-5. Five five. Um, you know, I'm Demacia Freljord. It's not like I'm, I don't know, maybe they're worried about Fury of the North or something. I think, I guess they just want all of the overwhelm damage possible. Certainly wish I could play Radiant Guardian and Hearth Guard. That would have been ideal. That we could play both of those. But they're just going to be going straight to attacks. Love it. Great draw step. Honestly, best draw step. Hmm, attack with champs or no? Okay, no attack with champs. Stand and defend. I'll protect the villages. Okay, GG's. GG's. Alright, did a lot better job of stabilizing. Honestly, Braum just helped slow the game down a whole lot. It's exactly what Braum's supposed to do. And we didn't even need to play our Catalyst of Aeons till later. Like we were still at 20 whenever we played our first Catalyst of Aeons. Harsh Winds is very harsh. That's a very good card. That card was spectacular for us multiple times in that game. Yeah, they had those large Overwhelm units that... Um, how are they pumping up? What did they use to pump up? Like, how do they have a 7-6? Six? Isn't 6-5 six, supposed to be as big as that thing gets? Two. No, I guess 7-6 is as big as the thing gets. Is that right? Vision pump power, but did they pump toughness? I guess no. I guess so. I guess seven six is so. If you have five things in play, then yeah, I guess it is a seven six, isn't it? Good card. Nothing escapes my watch. Safeguard our homes. All right, good start for them. Work our way towards playing. The order rewards um, its fate. Getting Lux in play. So even though an avalanche can kill a bunch of these things, it's it's not really that bad for them. The sentry replaces itself. The shadow assassin replaces itself. Silent as death. That shadow assassin's bigger. You may think, oh wow, we just you know got a three for one, which technically we did, but I still have six cards and they have seven, <laughs> so they're still up a card. Let the light guide you. Yeah, Jinx has been performing really, really well. We've played two different Jinx decks. We play we played the Professor Jinx that you can see up here in the top left hand corner and did win all of our games there. And um, and then we also played discard aggro yesterday. You which, own what you take. Um, lots of people loving that YouTube video yesterday. With discard aggro, here I'll send you this one. Stand and fight. I will play my part.
Well, Lux is vulnerable. If we do Harsh Winds immediately, maybe they have their 2-1 Shadow Assassin challenge the Lux instead. And maybe it does something. I don't know what. I don't know why, but... I like just Harsh Winds-ing whatever was going to challenge the Lux. So let's see, if I go Avalanche, we still have seven mana. I wish I had a two mana spell to pair with Avalanche. Because I can Avalanche and I can Tavern Keeper and heal Lux again. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna kind of see. I'm gonna let them play something. Definitely wish I could play Avalanche and not rely on Remembrance to level up Lux. Passing turn. First we fight. This is fun. Yes. It's not that important that I'm going to be using the Harsh Winds. Our strength is yours. Forgot that thing would go back to a 2 3. That's a bummer. Happy with where we're at. Shine with me. Arshwin's still really good. Should be able to get a couple of attacks next turn, thanks to Tiana Crown Guard. We are getting lasers. Getting them lasers. We don't really have any other spells, so if the, if the Lux dies, then the Lux dies. What a shame you aren't, Antiana. See them having their own harsh winds. It's about the scariest card for us to face. To no one. Oh, I guess that's kind of scary too. I suppose. Don't get to attack.
So the problem with Crown Guard is I don't get to play anything else. Yeah, we definitely want spells, right? Things to level up Lux. We got we got our units covered. Huh. Well, I suppose that's the thing. Really difficult beating this Sejuani. Can't play anything with Tiana. So let's see. I go to attacks. What will you have? Yeah, dragons are. Dragons of Rage. Basically, Will of Ionia. Who knows? I'll rip that mustache off and wear it! I'm for talking to. Good luck. Have fun. Discipline or death. This one's on the house. George! Ready the torches. Let's talk about your staff. Show them our teeth. Alert the villain. Did we get our mighty Boro? Yeah. I guess I was supposed to challenge that last, but we still it still worked out. We still got a mighty Boro. That frostbites. I guess it. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna frostbite everything. Stand and defend. Blocking with the three three is too risky. Say we had we had Fury of the North covered, but we didn't have Will of Ionia plus Fury of the North. Man, that's such a card. That's such a card's a heck of a card. History still arcs toward justice. Well, the turn that just a couple of turns ago, I played the two Avaros and Sentries. The turn they killed the Lux, and I feel like if I, you know, if I, it would have been a lot better to be able to play the Radiant Guardian than the second Avaros and Sentry. We just we really need an, another spell to go along with Lux. Obviously, a War Mother's Call that, that whole time would have been amazing. We don't know if they had Deny to be able to counter it, but... Oh, well. Um, yeah, that was... That was a little unfortunate there. Our deck definitely felt really powerful if our cards lined up. Um, felt a little off. I don't I don't know. Two of the, those first two losses were... Um, sorry, I had something in my eye. Those first two losses were really chalked up to opponents having amazing hands. Obviously, the very first one, I needed to play that Catalyst of Aeons on turn three. Even if I did, I don't know if we're winning. They had the absolute perfect um, Lux hand with the 
with the turn three remembrance and uh you know then the perfect mage seekers you know the two to four three mage seekers on turn four and all that kind of stuff and then yeah the burn deck just ran us over uh, i guess the new new kind of aggro deck i i expect that aggro deck to really be that discard aggro to just start being more and more popular um it looks really good and with will of ionia even nerd like decks are uh, decks are kind of slow. I, I expect aggro to be really popular. Um, you always play War Mothers when you play this deck? Yeah, we... Uh, did I cast War Mothers at all? I don't think I cast it a single time in the five games. That would have been a, a that would have been definitely the War Mothers call game that would have been amazing to have throughout any of those turns. Um, Lux was great. Harsh Winds was great. You know, Lux Harsh Winds, that's, that's a a classic that was awesome tiana crown guard honestly pretty disappointing i was expecting it to be better it just it takes up the entire turn to play it and then it's just like a seven seven and they just chump block it i don't know it was it was pretty disappointing um i don't know if there's anything better obviously it's supposed to be just something you get in with war mother's call but we we just drew our two tiana crown guards like every game and we drew zero war mother's calls which i guess it's supposed to be the other way around whenever we, you have three war mother's call um, so I guess, I guess that's supposed to go the other way around, but that just wasn't, wasn't what we had. Man, back to back would be sweet in this deck. Level up that Lux. Um, so I don't know. I think, I think we were on a little bit of, I think we had, I, I think we had some, a little poor variance of really showing like how powerful this deck could be. It was kind of difficult to turn on Radiant Guardian. It was just pretty awkward, like a lot of times of like trying to get this thing to be life steal, and then when I when we finally did, like our opponents would have an answer for it. And it was a little awkward. Um, maybe instead of Ice Veil Archer, just getting some interaction spells. You know, we're talking about maybe like single combat. Maybe that'd be better than Ice Veil Archer or Concerted Strike. Single combat would pair, you know, that would pair with Avalanche. How we're talking about how, like, I really wanted something to pair with Avalanche, like, for the Lux. Um, I don't know. There's, all these cards are playable. That's what makes Legends of Runeterra great. You can play, you can customize decks till your heart's content. All of these cards are playable. They're all good. Um, is Tiana Crown Guard better than Genevieve Elmhart? The answer is probably no, right? Like, isn't Genevieve Elmhart just a better card, even even with War Mother's Call and stuff? This card's just insane. Maybe that maybe that's like that could have yeah, that could have maybe made a big difference. Tiana Congar was just so slow. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we should just maybe we should just draw War Mother's Call more and play it more. Okay, I got you. Yeah, instant rally is fun. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's really the thing, you know. I'm I'm kind of thinking of the cards as hard casting them, but we should be uh, we should really just be playing War Mother's Call, <laughs> but we never did. Um, would you swap RG Radiant Guardian? Would you swap Radiant Guardian with back to back? Not really. Like I talked about, like aggro is going to be super popular. I think the Radiant Guardians are necessary for the aggro matchup, so no. I could see playing back-to-back -back instead of Remembrance, to be honest. We didn't really seem like that much of a Remembrance deck. Maybe back to... Like, maybe like maybe you don't need all three Remembrance. Maybe, like, two and one back-to-back -back or something like that. I don't know. We need some more... We need some more... Um, yeah, why don't we just play the triple catalyst into war mothers every game i know right we we did we really i really didn't war mothers well did not uh not war mothers well when that's that's the point of our deck yeah there's so many things you could do um i think i would i'd want to just keep on playing some more games and uh you know seeing some more action with it before before really suggesting that this would absolutely be a good change kind of thing you know like i'm i threw out some suggestions of things that could change but i'm not necessarily saying that those are our upgrades you know it's just i uh, don't have the requisite number of experience experience with this specific deck 
But anyway, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. Let me know uh, what you think of the deck. It was pretty interesting. I really wish I really wish I could have shown it off uh, with the War Mother's Call. But that's the thing about, you know, just playing real games. Real games aren't always exactly how you draw them up. You know, like it's not, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and play, you know, 40 games and find, you know, wait till like the one game that we play Triple Catalyst into War Mothers and it's amazing and then be like, hey, look at what this deck does all the time. I mean, that's just not how, that's not the real life, right? <laughs> so try to show y'all show y'all the real life of what games uh, look like and how they play out. All right, but anyway, that's it here for War Mother Lux. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.